Good afternoon on what is a grey, cool and overcast day. It is Monday the 29th of August, August Bank Holiday, and I have some boxes to unbox, including this one. So let's get this open. It comes quite easily. And what I've got in there is, let's give that a bit of a shake so you can really see it. is um, Grand uh, Mechanismo, um, uh, sorry, Grand Mechanismo, um, Clock Punk Role Playing in Da Vinci's Florence uh, by Mark Galliotti. Now, um, Mark Galliotti is a name you might recognise in a couple of contexts. He's done some uh, game writing um, mostly back in the 90s and noughties. Uh, contributing a lot to um, Ring, uh, Glorantha and HeroQuest uh, related content including his own Mythic Russia role-playing game and also he is a specialist in um, Russia, history, politics uh, and relations between East and West and so on. So in the past six months, and this is essentially the six months uh, uh, previous to August 29th today, you might have heard him speaking as an expert with regard to the conflict in the, in the Ukraine. Um, but in the meantime, besides doing that, he's had time to write this. So, uh, this, is, oh, this is the latest book from Osprey uh, Games, by the way. So, uh, Gra uh, uh, Grand Mechanismo, clock, pu clock Punk Role Playing in Da Vinci's Florence, in the year of our Lord, 1510, uh, and one has to wonder how differently history could have played out if uh, Niccolò Machiavelli, the uh, military commissioner of the Republic of France, had not understood the, the, the true scale of Leonardo uh, Vinci's genius. In such a world, the visionary might simply have uh, wasted his time po uh, painting portraits of women and doodling in a sketchbook. Um, now, to be fair, if you've ever had a chance to see any of uh, da Vinci's sketches, um, they are stunning. Um, a few years ago there was an exhibition that went around the country in which um, you know, we have to queue for, came to here to Birmingham and, and, um, uh, which, which um, uh, had on display many, a lot of his sketches including many um, uh, essentially donated to, to the exhibition or lent to the exhibition by the Queen so yes, no they were exquisite, they were fantastic anyway, uh, instead he unleashed a technological revolution whose primitive computers um, decorated with um, uh, delicately painted cupids uh, run on water clocks, spring-powered tanks whir across the battlefields, cannons um, thundering from their, from their flanks and gliders uh, flit um, across perfectly blue Tuscan skies. Uh, Grand, Grand Mechanismo is a role-playing game, a swashbuckling adventure in a renaissance Italy where Florence's winding ally, alleys play host to spies, scholars and sellswords alike. Players are nobles, mercenaries, inventors and artisans who may find themselves coming across, um, crossing wits with Machiavelli, avoiding the dangerous charms of Lucretia Borgia, or um, hearing uh, Christopher Columbus tales of the new world he has discovered. So this is entirely a clock punk renaissance role-playing game. But, uh, so, um, we're going to um, introduction, uh, including a list of the features of uh, Grand Mechanism. Uh, a unique setting uh, brings many of the tropes and um, uh, dilemmas of the cyberpunk genre into a rather different and novel world. Um, yes, I suppose so, because what you've got, got is um, radically advanced technology, uh, you know, essentially pushing people towards Technoshock. They've not had the intervening hundreds of years of development in terms of um, particularly steam work. Um, essentially free-flowing character creation guidelines, they describe your alter ego in the game and use the descriptions of traits. Um, and we see dice building game, Grand Mechanismo requires traditional six sided dice in play and lots of them. Describe what your character is doing and make use of the many advantages you can to build a large hand or pool of dice as possible. Roll your dice, count up the successes and the highest total wins. Uh, a set of numerous complicated rules, it provides storytelling opportunities to be translated into challenges. So, great. 
And the thing is, with the latter, with the you know uh, storytelling opportunities translated into challenges, you can see um, Gary Otis thinking um, and design uh, ethos coming through from his previous experiences with the Hero Quest system. So, um, essentially describing what you need with the nature of the game, dice, so on, telling you there's no exam on how you know you know one's. Um, at, uh, you know, there's a lot of information, but you know, you know nobody's going to um, test you on it. And then we delve into the world of uh, Grand Mechanismo um, and describing the Renaissance. And it says, I've got a nice, like, how hysterical is this history? Uh, so, um, set up aside the admittedly not so minor details as clockwork computers and steam powered crossbows. And the answer is, this setting is certainly based on history as seems most fun. Frankly, the real era in which Grand Mechanismo takes place is interesting in and of itself. That said, some things have been changed specifically where altering a detail or moving something by year or two makes the setting more entertaining. The Order of St John was only given Malta in 1530, for example. Uh, a seven roller uh, actually only lived to 1498. Of course, the virtue of this is that uh, what makes all the more easy and appropriate for you to really tweak the history as you want to. So, not only does this tweak history here and there, gives you permission to do so. So here we get into the, into, uh, the Renaissance and um, a description of the period and of course the geography um, because this is Renaissance Italy and it is centuries before we have Italian unification uh, under Garibaldi um, in the early 1860s. Um, so, description of Florence, the cradle of the Renaissance, um, under, um, you know, um, the powers that be, uh, power of Rome, Rome being the seat of um, the church, um, and carrying uh, the various city-states. So we've got Venice and Milan, uh, G G G uh, Genoa, Naples, so on, and other main cities. Um, at, uh, and uh, there we have a uh, illustration of uh, Lucrezia Borgia. So um, we've got a one stretches um, the basically looks at the wider um, state of Europe as well, basically giving each sort of like a paragraph or two uh, with notes for the guide, a name for the gram of the game master in Grand Mechanismo. Uh, and also talks about the Holy Roman Empire, which would have been at its height in this period as well. Um, it's another 120 years before we have the Thirty Years' War. And even further afield, so it does look at um, the Ottoman Empire, Muscovy, Africa, so on. It's, it's, it's looking at the sort of like the known world uh, as um, would have been viewed there before it dies back into Florence in greater detail. And then we have the figure of Machiavelli himself. And then we get on to the new science and um, the, um, the grand mechanismo uh, with Leonardo himself, uh, complete with um, you know, jeweler's uh, glass there uh, for studying detail. Uh, we have a, a map of the uh, of, of Florence, uh, the Republica di Florence, uh, 1510, and a breakdown of the city quarter by quarter. Uh, what it's like everyday life, business, banking, and credit—all important facets um, of life. War and weapons. So we have a section on uh, condottieri and militias, weapons, and the Florentine arsenal. And this, with the new technology, would have given. Uh, front an incredible um, advantage. We even have um, what it's like to fight mano a mano here, but also section here uh, story seed King Lu King Louis super gun, uh, then a guide to travel. Um, so travel on the sea. So we've actually got ships of the period as well as sort of like almost submersibles there. Uh, I'm hoping. Um, medicine. We're dealing more, more and more with the technology, with the with the uh, um, clockwork 
um, as well. Scholarship, law and crime. So good sections and they good backgrounds. And of course, there's doubtless you can easily go away, find a good book um, on the subject. We have a section on vice because it's rife with vice, I would imagine. Before we get into church and the faith, uh, and that's including the others. So we do, do discuss heretics, Jews and Muslims. And does have a discussion here of tricky um, topics and handling them because obviously we don't view those, uh, you know, um, heretics, Jews or Muslims as the other today. And then we get into the game itself. Um, before that, we've actually got an illustration of um, the land tank, which I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar uh, with seeing from the actual images uh, taken from uh, da Vinci's own drawings, but there you have it in operation. So we'll get into the game and describing what a role-playing game session is like first. Before we get into the basics, and the middle of the basics, we've got a good example there of just how you know you, you, you basically you play, you assemble your dice pool, and so on. Um, you know, the characters, I think this is how you begin to um, create characters. Um, no, so essentially you have the three stats, body, mind, and so on, then you basically traits associated with them, flaws, so on. And here we're going to actually create a character. So we dealt with character concepts, um, tables of example names, um, attributes and traits and goals and so on, um, starting wealth, finishing up and so on, as well as looking at particular archetypes. Um, so artifice, art artificer, artisan, the artist, um, banker, uh, we've also got um, Bravo, Doctor, Entertainer, Merchant, Nerdowell, Nobleman, Noblewoman, because um, it can be very different, very different kind of roles because of um, the nature of um, the gender differences, the differences in gender roles in the period. Um, the Priest and the Rebel Rouser. I would have liked, would have been nice if some of these had been illustrated, I would say, but you know. Um, there's plenty of good art in here. Sailor, scholar, soldier, woodsman, spy, and so on, workman. And then we go into you've got origins as well, you're adding that in as traits. There's lots of sort of like you can see how you're building the character there. Um, and then the rules themselves. You're creating challenges. One roll challenges, building your pool of dice, multi roll challenges, uh, looking at different kinds of challenges so that essentially we have uh, combat and debates, uh, seductions, persuasions, exploratory challenges, long term challenges, and handling things like moots and uh, outcomes and margins of victory. So it's all in there, it's all covering sort of essentially what you would want, to, you would expect in a game like this. Um, and then you know, healing, nudges, flaws, scale in the game. Obviously, you, you know, go up from the person on up, and you're facing large, potentially larger battles. You might, you know, go up to the point where you have a sea battle or a big land battle. How do you cope with that? With the player character involvement in that, um, wealth and equipment, uh, magic, and the new science. Kind of surprised that this is so far all the way into the book actually um i'm so surprised there's sort of like there isn't too much uh to it in comparison to the rest of the book you have a look there but maybe perhaps it will be expanded upon in a future supplement um but we're dealing here with mechanisms such as uh, a clockwork night clocking faith bringing faith advancement of your, the, the mechanism um, and turning the world, how to change it, tilting the world, playing an episodic arc. And even less actually advice on, 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 on the art of invention. Uh, we have a section for the guide and the type of game they're playing it. So essentially whether, you know, involving politics, power, travel law, keeping it in the family, 
um, you know, as you actually members of all of one family trying to survive. A clockpunk dystopia, you know, where you have, um, you know, not the cyberpunks, but the clockpunks, uh, um, clockpunk um, trying to fight against, um, you know, those in charge. And they've got a few extra characters, so on at the end. So, yeah, that is um, uh, Grand uh, Mechanismo, Clockwork Role Playing in Da Vinci's uh, Florence. Um, you've got advice on here and things like thrilling, com thrilling combat, keep it flowing, and guts for glory, of course. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, looking through that, I can see how uh, the author's um, design, uh, you know, basically uh, the kind of mechanics he's worked with in the past through the Hero Quest have kind of heavily influenced this title, um, which really is going to be, I would describe as Osprey Games' first storytelling um, role playing game. Um, uh, uh, and certainly, sort of like, it'd be really quite interesting. Um, from a historical point of view and a sort of like, you know, uh, an alternate history point of view. So, yes, that is Grand Mechanismo, published by uh, Osprey Games, written by Mark Galeotti. Hope you have enjoyed this unboxing in the look. If you have, please do click on the like button down below. And of course, if you've got any comments or feedback, appreciate you taking the time to post those. And lastly, if you want to see me out here um, with a box from which I will unbox a book or game and chat about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so, all of course accompanied by a nice hot cup of tea. Then please do hit the subscribe button down below. In the meantime, thanks again for watching another unboxing in the nook. I'll be back again soon with another one. Bye for now.